You know, how significant are these new claims? Can we tell? <laughs> I think, you know, every revelation that comes out of this nature is significant in that it furthers what we know. It expands on the investigation in progress in terms of what's out there. And we should be really clear with this. This broke on Bloomberg the past half hour. Greg Farrell and our crack legal team pushing ahead with this story. And it shows that, it, you know, according to the reporting in July, according to unsealed email records, mm -hmm. George Papadopoulos sent an email indicating that the Trump campaign had approved a meeting in the UK between representatives from the Trump campaign and representatives from the Putin administration. Now, there's right. no indication we should make clear that that meeting was ever sent, that that, that right. meeting ever happened, that that email actually, that that meeting was actually approved, or that email actually was telling the truth about what had transpired. As we know, the Trump uh, administration has hit back quite hard at George Papadopoulos, character him as a liar, as a low-level advisor to the campaign. But again, it does draw, it's going to draw further questions, it's going to draw further scrutiny, and it's yeah. going to draw the circle closer and closer on exactly what the extent. Well, it, of you know, it's the whole thing where where there's smoke, there's got to be some fire, right? And there's certainly a lot of smoke now being generated. But, you know, is the Trump campaign right, though, or the, or the Trump White, you know, White House right when they say that, you know, he was a low level advisor or that he didn't have as big of an involvement as it seems like some of these, uh, you know, headlines and revelations are making it sound? I mean, in terms of being in an our circle, no, he wasn't. But this is also someone who Trump himself described, described as a great guy, who was in uh, an important foreign policy meeting, described as a foreign policy, a volunteer. We should we should point out. But what's interesting about you know Mark Caputo, an advisor too, characterizes as someone who basically got coffee. So I think there's going to be uh, smoke on both sides of that side. But, you know, here's what's significant about this, and we should always remember what's significant about this, is when you look at Mueller, Robert Mueller, what he's been doing in building this investigation, you can see the trend of where he's trying to take this take, take this to go. The Manafort uh, and Rick Gates stuff about laundering money, about uh, not disclosing their work as, as how they should have, that's sort of one strand. This is a whole separate strand that goes directly to the issue of a, was there collusion, perhaps most importantly, with Russian context? And B, was there any lying about the extent of those contexts? That's going to be the things they're really focused on. That, frankly, mm -hmm. is what the American people wanted this investigation to be all about. Yeah, and Meg, we were just talking to Justin Sink and talking about how the, the focus might turn next to Sam Clovis. What can he provide here in part of this whole investigation, these revelations now? Well, he is linked to George Papadopoulos, and there's a linking there of what was instructed, what was approved. Sam Clovis has come out and said that, you know, meant that this there was very strict rules about people representing the campaign abroad, that there were very strict rules about what they could and couldn't do in terms of these contacts, has rejected these allegations out of hand. So, yes, that is going to be where the investigation next term. But there's a lot of different figures who um, this investigation is swirling around. Michael Flynn um, on the Democratic side, uh, Tony Podesta, uh, a famed Democratic power broker, has stepped away from his lobbying firm, also involved with Paul Manafort in Ukrainian business and Ukrainian um, electioneering on that side. So I, I expect we'll see further on that as well. There are a number of figures. This is a very wide circle of people. And what has been interesting, I think, and fascinating is when you look at the White House and how they've responded to these allegations, they have been consistent and vehement in their distancing. They are not taking a sort of standard legal Line as a former lawyer of saying we're not going to comment. They've gone out, they've characterized George Papadopoulos as a liar. They said it has nothing to do with the campaign. They've repeatedly characterized Paul Manafort as a minor figure, despite the fact he was actually the campaign manager. So it's going to be interesting how long that line can hold. Knowing the Trump administration as well as we do, we know how they react in these situations, and I expect they'll continue to take this kind of very firm line. And its relationship with the fact is, is going to be troubling to us all.